Hey there, it's Brie, and these are my recent reads. So I'm trying something new. Instead of my normal wrap-ups this month, I'm going to try out doing recent reads every two weeks instead of doing a wrap-up at the end of the month. I'm still going to do a wrap-up, but that will mostly consist of me just ranking the books that I read from my least favorite to my favorite and then also talking about stats and everything. But for recent reads, I think every two weeks I'm going to talk about the books that I've read in those two weeks. I ended up reading 11 books total in the past two weeks, and I'm going to share these with you in the order that I read them as opposed to my normal wrap-ups where I rank them. So the first book that I read in June was On the Rocks. It's Becker Brothers book number one by Candy Steiner. This one I ended up giving three stars. It is a small town contemporary romance and there is an age gap in it. It's about a man named Noah who works at a whiskey distillery and then Ruby who is 19 years old and she is about to get married for a gift for her husband or soon-to-be husband. She wants to buy him some of this really nice whiskey. That's where they end up meeting. I will say for those who don't like this in romance novels, there is cheating in this. So if you don't like that, this book has it. I mean, the whole premise of it revolves around her and she's about to get married. And yes, it does the typical thing where you find out that her fiance is kind of awful. There is already emotional cheating that has gone on before you find out that he's awful. So... I don't know, that didn't sit right with me. I'm not usually adamantly against it in a book. There are a few books where it's pulled off well. The first one I'm thinking of is maybe Someday. Like that one didn't bother me nearly as much as this one did. And in that one, the person that was being cheated on was a good person. <laughs> so I don't think that has anything to do with it, whether the person is good or bad. I think it's just how it's written. The age gap wasn't really like a big thing, I feel like. It's not really forbidden in that reason. It's forbidden because she's in a relationship and she's getting married. There wasn't a lot of the things that I like in forbidden romances in this one. I usually like a lot more longing in it, and I don't like it to be sullied by cheating. I'd rather them be separated for a different reason other than the other person being with somebody else. But other than that, I am really, really interested in the series and reading on in the series because I really do like what I read about the brothers. I've been liking small town romances more and more. I've been reading quite a few of them. So this one was good. It just wasn't great. The next book that I ended up reading in June was The Boyfriend Project by Farah Rashan. And this is the first book in the series. I believe the series is called The Boyfriend Project. This is a super fun book about about these three women. One of them is live tweeting this horrible date that she's on and then the other two women are following these live tweets and are realizing that this other woman is on a date with the guy that they've been seeing and none of the three of them know that they've all been seeing the same guy. So the two women who are following it and have dated this guy end up going to the restaurant to confront him and it just is so freaking hilarious <laughs> how they tear him down and it actually, I guess, Guess someone ends up getting it on video and it goes viral and all of that stuff. Then those three women end up connecting and they end up becoming friends and they end up having this pact where they want to kind of just avoid all men altogether and just focus on bettering themselves and bettering their lives and not worry about trying to get in relationships because they've all had such unsuccessful attempts at dating. And of course, our main character ends up meeting a guy <laughs> and falling for him. The best part of this book was that friendship between the three women and also I loved our main character. She's a woman in STEM, which I always talk about. I love reading about women in STEM. STEM. Um, she works for a very successful tech company. The romance in this wasn't the thing that I loved the most about it. What I loved the most about it was the main character and the friendship that the girls ended up having. I really liked the beginning part of it. I felt like the middle and the end was pretty forgettable, but Overall, I really did like this book. The next book that I read was actually an audiobook that I borrowed from my library. So I listened to it with Libby, and it was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Let me just tell you, this book was amazing. I gave it five stars. This is a coming of age story about a girl who has felt very out of place. She's very misunderstood by her parents and people that she goes to school with. And it's about her kind of finding herself through 
spoken word poetry, and it's told in verse as well. Elizabeth Acevedo, I'm pretty sure, is a spoken word poet because she actually is the one who reads her audiobooks, and she read this one, and oh my gosh, it's amazing. I am such a big fan of spoken word poetry. I loved the inflection and the passion that she put behind it, and I loved that I ended up listening to this on audio. I do want to buy the physical book because I want to go back and reread it and just underline all of my favorite parts. There were so many quotable things in this book, and it was just so beautifully written. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of poetry and this was just absolutely gorgeous. Next, I read The Handsome Lawman. This is Handsome Devils, book number three by Lori Wilde. I ended up giving this book four stars. This is a small town contemporary cowboy romance and it's part of a series that follows these brothers that live in this town. They're known for being handsome. I read one book in this series before and I liked it, but this one I definitely liked a lot more. This one is the brother who has happens to be a sheriff. It's between him and a girl who has just moved to town and opened up a pet shop. And they have a really cute meet cute because in the very beginning of the book, he has to confront her because she's been accused of theft by one of the people in town. And it's just adorable overall because she completely stands on her own and holds her own in this situation. But it's not, it's not super serious. Like it's kind of tongue in cheek because it's the theft of this like lawn gnome of a rabbit that's like falling apart and she clearly didn't take it. It was like put there. But it was overall a super cute story and there are pets involved. There's an adorable puppy in it. One thing that I took note of while I was reading this and I was like, mm, don't do that. She is fostering this puppy. Her and the hero's sister kind of pressure him into adopting it. And I'm like, you never pressure someone into adopting a puppy. Like that is a serious big decision and it shouldn't be pushed on you. It should be a decision you make on your own. But aside from all that, it was very cute because he does end up falling for the puppy. So if you like reading books that have dogs in it or animals in it in general, and especially if you like small town romances, I think you will like this one. Next, I ended up reading The Man I Can't Have. It's Ward Duet, book number one by Shinora Williams. I ended up giving it three stars. It's a contemporary romance about a woman who is very wealthy. She just got married and her husband and works these long hours and he's always gone for work and on business trips and she is an artist but she mostly just is home a lot and she is renovating her backyard and ends up hiring this landscape company that is owned by the hero and he ends up working there too and they have this connection so there is cheating in this book like cheating <laughs> like this isn't just like emotional cheating it's cheating it felt a little bit disjointed to me, but the romance was really good in it. And that was the one payoff. The ending of it completely threw me for a loop, which isn't surprising because this is a duet. Although when I was reading it, I didn't realize it was a duet. The way it ended took me completely by surprise. And then I realized afterward that it was a duet and I was like, oh, that's why. And there are also just little elements here and there. Like the hero in it pays this prostitute to come to his house like regularly. And I don't know how I feel about that when you're reading about two people falling in love. Granted, she is in a relationship, so I guess that kind of makes up for it, but I don't know. It just, it didn't sit right with me. Let's just say that. So I actually ended up listening to that on Audible Escape, and it also is available on Kindle Unlimited. I don't think I'm going to read the next book in that duet. The next book I ended up reading was Insidious Tales from the Dark Side, book number one by Aletha Romig. I read this because it's Steph from Steph Reads Romance. It's her favorite book. And she loves this author. Me, along with a few other fellow romance booktubers, we ended up doing a live show about this book. So I ended up reading this book the day before we did the live show because I was very last minute about it. I had actually kind of forgotten about it. So I didn't read anything about this book prior to reading it. So I went in 100% blind. I didn't have any expectations going into it. I didn't even know what type of romance it was going to be. All I knew was that it was her favorite. I wanted to hop on the live show and talk about this book because she loves it so much. This book completely took me by surprise. I was unprepared for what it was going to be about. First of all, this book has so many trigger warnings. If you have any triggers at all, you probably shouldn't read this book because holy crap. This is an extremely dark 
romance. It's a revenge story. It's about a woman who is married to this extremely powerful and wealthy man who is dying. She has a contract with him that basically takes away her consent. And he happens to really enjoy watching her with other men and she does not enjoy doing it. And he's dying so she is on the verge of being out of this contract finally. So we're on the live show and Jen was bringing up a lot of good points when she was ranting about this book and I totally understand the people that dislike this book. I get it. I get why you would dislike this book but I also get why this is Steph's favorite book because it's such a unique and such a dark gritty romance. The thing that I loved about it was our main character because she's such a freaking badass. I love a vengeful dark heroine. Like you would expect that she would be super submissive given the situation that she's in and the things that she has done but she's not at all. Like she is a freaking badass and I loved her even though she's not perfect. Like pretty much every character in this book is awful in their own way, but there's something great about that too, if you're expecting that. Like if you're going into this expecting it to be a somewhat taboo romance or even a romance at all, that's not what you're gonna get. Next, I ended up reading White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin DiAngelo. I read this for the Blackout Buddy read. It's this book and then also White Rage that are part of the Blackout Buddy read and they are doing a live show on Juneteenth at 7 o'clock, I think. I'll link that information down below so you have it. Ended up buying the shirt for the Buddy Read also, and all the proceeds for that shirt are being donated. Ended up buying this audiobook from Libro FM. The great thing about Libro FM is anytime you buy from them, it supports a indie bookstore of your choice. So I ended up choosing a bookstore in Chicago called Semicolon and it's owned by a black woman. I did a little research and I found that bookstore. The other cool thing about Libro FM, especially in particular with this book, is if you buy this book, it will let you gift this book for free to one person. You get a special link for it, so I ended up sending it to my brother. They do that and the author still gets the royalties for it, which is nice because it's on Libro FM because they are supporting people reading this book, so I thought that was super cool. This is a book by a white author to educate white people about racism. And this book does exactly what it intends to do. It made me uncomfortable and I feel like when you read this book you should be uncomfortable. It makes you kind of take a really good hard look at yourself and your way of thinking and your way of speaking or not speaking in situations. This book gave me the history lesson that they don't teach in schools. Like I said, I did buy this book on audio. I do really want to get the physical copy of this book because there are a lot of things that I wanted to annotate and underline and take note of and kind of digest and keep top of mind. So I think I'm going to end up buying the physical copy of this book also. The next book I read in the past couple of weeks was Once More Upon a Time by Roshani Chachki. This I ended up giving four stars. This was an Audible exclusive and every month with Audible, if you're a member, you get to download some of their exclusives for free and this was one of them. And I downloaded it because it seemed like a really awesome premise. It's about a king who trades the love between himself and his queen in exchange for her life. And the story begins a year and a day after that takes place, when they realize that even though their love was gone, they can still find their way back to it. So this is very much told in a very fantastical and fairy tale voice. At first, I gave this book three stars instead of four because it was so short. I think it's only like two hours or something like that, but it's so short and I just have never been a fan of the kind of super whimsical fairy tale type storytelling, but the more that I sat with it and the more that I thought about it and the more that I thought about the intention behind the book, the more I was impressed with it. There are a lot of parallels that the story draws between what's happening between the king and queen and what happens in marriages. A lot of times married couples fall out of love just because of how they've grown and changed and have grown and changed apart from each other. Many times the married couple doesn't realize that they can't can fall in love again. Just like the two main characters in this book, the king and the queen, they think that their love is taken and they think that it's something that has to be given back to them, but it's something they have to do themselves. They can fall in love again. It's just up to them to do it. I just thought that that was really interesting. I'm not 100% sure if that was the intention behind that book, but that's what I gathered from it. The next book that I read was Can't Escape Love, Reluctant Royals, book number 2.6 by Alyssa Cole. I gave this book 
five stars. I freaking loved this book. This is a super short book. It's only four hours long. The audiobook is only four hours long. I got it from Scribd. I can't handle how adorable this was. I wish it was longer. Like if I had one complaint about this book, it would be that I wish it was longer. So the entire premise is amazing. It's the geeky romance novel that we all need and love. So the main character, the heroine, is black and she's disabled, she's in a wheelchair, and she's super, super geeky, and she's also a badass boss bitch. She runs her own super successful website, and then the hero in this is geeky in his own way, in a like slightly different way. He's really, really good at puzzles, he designs escape rooms. So she is the only one who watches or used to watch his live streams, and the reason why she's watching his live streams is because because his voice is so soothing to her that it puts her to sleep. And then when he has to stop doing the live streams and takes them down, she can't sleep anymore. So kind of reluctantly, she ends up contacting him and is like, hey, can you send me audio clips of your voice? Because I can't sleep. <laughs> and it's just so funny. It's so adorable. It's so cute. I love the fact that he has the soothing voice because I have such an obsession with people who have really nice speaking voices. I'm obsessed with Jonathan Groff because he has the most soothing, beautiful speaking voice. I just have, a, have always had a deep, deep, deep obsession and crush on Matthew Broderick. He's also an amazing singer. He's a Broadway singer. He did the voice of Kristoff in Frozen. Reindeers are better than people. Sven, don't you think that's true? Oh my gosh. I just... I love that because I was picturing Jonathan Groff's voice and I was totally in it whenever she was talking about how much she loved his voice and like the different ways he would say things and stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I love this so much. You have got to read this book. It's quick, it's fun, it's easy, and I loved it. The next book that I read was My Favorite Souvenir by Penelope Ward and Vi Keeland. I ended up giving this book three stars. I feel like every single book that I've ever read from this author duo, I've given three stars. <laughs> They're all kind of good, but they just also kind of missed the mark for me. And this book was one of them, which is super sad because I was really looking forward to it. This book is available on Audible Escape and Kindle Unlimited, by the way. So I loved the premise of this book and I actually really liked how it was executed. There was just something that ended up falling flat. I don't know, I, maybe it was the romance. I've been trying to think about what I didn't love about this and part of it was the epilogue. I felt like the epilogue was just unnecessary and don't get me wrong, I am here for epilogues that tie everything into a pretty bow and give you a happily ever after and everything, but this one I felt just was unnecessary. It's about a woman who has essentially been stood up at the altar so she decided to go on her honeymoon anyway. Something happens with her hotel room. There's like a snowstorm or something and she ends up getting snowed in but then they don't have the hotel room anymore and she is sitting in the lobby with a bunch of other people who are on the wait list to get a hotel room because they have nowhere else to go and she sees this guy who's kind of conning his way into getting a hotel room so she just on instinct like jumps into the con too which surprises him but they end up getting the hotel room together and they end up bonding and hanging out and they decide to just go on a road trip together and so they do and I just I love the whole thought process behind that and I felt like that all was executed well. What they didn't pull off was for some reason they had this tarot card reader in the book and this whole like magical element in it and it was just a very small part of the book but it was entirely unnecessary. I felt like the book would have been just fine without it. I don't know. I thought that the book was fine. I'm surprised I didn't like it more because it had all the elements of a book that I would like and I liked like I said the premise about it but it just... I don't know, it missed the mark for me. The next book that I finished was Hard As It Gets by Laura Kay. This is the first book in the Hard Inked series, and this is a series that follows a group of men who are in the military, but they have been, I don't know that they were dishonorably discharged from the military, but something happened and it was a big misunderstanding or a lie and they all have been dishonored by it. And I have a feeling this whole series follows them trying to expose the truth so that they can clear their names. But it also 
revolves around Hard Ink, which is a tattoo shop that one of them works at or owns. I think he owns it with his brother. That's who the hero is in this one. It's the owner of the tattoo shop. This is a romantic suspense, and I'm realizing that I don't love romantic suspense novels <laughs> because I really just want the romance in the books. I gave this book four stars because I loved the romance so much, even though I didn't love the romantic suspense aspect of it. The other thing that I loved about this book was all of the characters and how you're introduced to all of them because I'm so interested in reading all the other books in this because I'm so interested in the other characters. And I really hope that the hero's brother gets his own book because I am so desperately in love with him. He's absolutely adorable. You're introduced to the brother within the first few pages of this book and I immediately fell in love with him, like immediately. And I just fell more and more in love with him throughout this entire book. I may have loved him just as much as I loved the hero in this. But like I said, the romance is really good. It's the kind of romance that I have been hoping for when reading Laura Kay ever since reading Hearts in Darkness because that is my all-time favorite Laura Kay novella. And this is what I've been hoping for was the romance in this one. I just hope that in the subsequent books, the romance is just as prominent as this one is. And I wouldn't mind if the suspense element was dialed down a little bit. And then the last book that I read over the past couple couple of weeks was All Boys Aren't Blue, a memoir manifesto by George M. Johnson. I gave this book five stars. This book came on my radar because of Instagram, actually. I saw it shared quite a bit for Pride Month because this is by a Black queer author. Despite the title, I somehow didn't realize that this was a memoir until I just picked it up. Like, for some reason, seeing the cover and everything, I thought it was going to be fiction, but it is not. It's a YA memoir. I loved it immensely. I was so invested in this author's story. I feel like this story is so important and I'm so glad it's classified as YA. Even though there are some explicit scenes, there are explicit scenes that I feel like need to be told. He addressed so many questions that he had himself growing up as a queer black man. I feel like it'll be so beneficial to young people who are going through the same thing or even young people who aren't going through the same thing just so that they can understand a little bit other people who are. I felt like this book was so important. It's so good. It's so beautifully written. It was somehow relatable even to me. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the books that I read recently. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, if you're looking forward to reading any of these books, and as always, happy reading.